Yeah. Welcome to the channel today. Uh, we're going to be talking today about blueberries. Uh, I've been growing these blueberries in these containers for about 12 years. And I kind of want to talk about, you know, some of the things that really don't talk to you a whole lot. Or they don't, uh, sometimes on the internet, on the YouTube, they don't talk about certain things. And they kind of leave things out. So I kind of want, I'm not going to try to talk you into growing blueberries. I'm just going to kind of show you some things you need to consider before you try to go in and plant blueberries and because they can be very easy to grow they can be very hard to grow it's according to, to, to the conditions and we're talking about four main conditions and there's two ways of growing them you can grow them in the pots like I got them here uh, that's more time consuming uh, but it's easier if you can grow them in the ground but they have certain requirements that must be met or they won't thrive and they end up dying on you without hardly producing any berries uh, I am talking about southern blueberries there's two two varieties or two types uh, one's rabbit eye blueberries and one southern high bush the southern high bush are a little bit more finicky about ph a little bit uh they bloom a lot earlier that comes out bloom in january february uh the uh rabbit eye tends to be a little more uh they bloom later so they don't bloom at the same time uh, but they tend to be a little bit hardier plant but anyway Four things you're gonna to have to have. Number one is pH. The pH has got to be right. They like a very strongly acidic soil or soil medium. It needs to be 4.5 to 5.5. Now, you're gonna hear a lot of people, they're gonna talk about, you know, they can, you know, you can grow blueberries and if your pH is too high, you can add such and such. Well, I'm gonna tell you first off, compost is not, it's, it's, mildly acidic to slightly alkaline uh, brown uh, pine, pine straw same thing uh, coffee grounds is basically neutral uh, all these different things now peat moss is acidic but the problem with pH is there's things called uh, buffers and that buffers keeps the pH from moving in a the soil. There are bicarbonates that just buffer pH. And by that, you may have a, a pH that's like 7.4. You can add acid to the soil, hydrochloric acid to the soil. And it would dip down for a day or two to around 7.2, 7.1. And, but within a week to 10 days, it's gonna come right back at 7.4. Because what happens is these buffering agents, these pH buffers get in there they eat up the, the uh, I guess eat's kind of a bad word, but they, they react with the, uh, they react with the, the stuff, with the uh, acid and neutralize it and bring it back to the regular soil, the regular pH. So yeah, you can add sulfur or, or to it, but it's always gonna have that tendency to go back to its original pH. Now, if you've got an alkaline soil, I wouldn't, I just don't think it's, it's, it's feasible to try to grow blueberries. <coughs> so if you go get a soils test, which you need to do in the area for in-ground blueberries, you get a soils test. If you're above seven, I'd say forget it. It's just gonna be too hard. And if you do get it down, it's gonna come back up. So, and everything always tries to bump the pH up a little bit anyway, include tap water and all these different things. So it's just gonna be, a, you're just gonna be fighting it all the time. And so, but if you're just at the edge of it, now one thing about adding sulfur that you have to watch out for is sulfur is not acidic, but the bacteria in the soil will transfer regular sulfur into sulfuric acid and that's what's acidic and that's what changes the pH. The problem with that is that it takes about six months for that biology to take, a, take control in warm weather. So if you do something in the fall and you, it gets cold and your temperature, uh, your soil temperature blo goes below fit by 55 degrees, it's not going to change the pH until until it warms up again and then it starts that you know you might get a couple of months out of it. You got to go four more months. So you're going to have to you know put the the sulfur in in the spring. You test it first, put the sulfur in, in the spring, let it work through the summer, check it again to see where you're at, and you may have to add more sulfur to bring it down some more. So it's not gonna be something that you can, it's a, a one-time thing. You can have to continue to put it in. You're gonna to have to plow it in. You don't wanna just put it on the surface because you'll stay on the surface for a long time. It takes years sometimes for it to, to move, or a couple of years to move down to the soil profile. So 
that's the first thing. And uh, in containers, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about that. But within regular soil, and the, the, tighter the, the tighter the soil is, the more resistance it is to change. So if you got a, a clay or, or, or a loam, it's gonna be hard to change if you got uh, sugar sand. If you got really sandy soil, you might be able to bring that, that pH down a lot. Well, you would be able to bring that pH down a lot easier. But uh, sulfur is gonna be the only thing that really works. Uh, to bring that to bring that pH down it just takes time. The second thing you're going to have to have is a well drained soil. Now the soil that I have here is pretty good, pretty good drained. Uh, if we get a rain and even if it's plowed, it'd be soggy wet. But then within two or three days, it starts drying up. Within a week, you can do anything you want to out there. You know, we had rain last week. I can go out there in the garden right now and, and plow it or whatever because it's it's dried up. Most of the time, we say well drained. People say, well, you know, it's my soil drains well. We're not talking about surface drainage, which you need, but it's the internal drainage that usually that usually gets people. It has to have good internal drainage. That, that soil, it, and what will happen to you in the, in the, in the winter time, it'll get wet, it'll stay wet, the roots will rot, the plant will survive, but then when it starts getting hot, it doesn't have any roots to be able to, you know, to pull in the water and the plant dies from lack of, lack of water. So you've got to have well-drained soil. If you've got a tight clay, uh, when I was in Beaumont, we had really tight clay. Uh, basically, it could have, you could grow rice. You could grow rice on it. Could stay wet, you know, almost all the time. Even in the summer, a lot of times you dig down, it's still wet, and basically it comes out in chunks, uh, like modeling clay. That's why I grew them in these, these pots because there's no way I could have put them in uh, the ground and be able to successfully grow them. Had the pH is fine, but didn't have well-drained soil. Now number three. I'm going to stand up because my knee's starting to hurt. And uh, you have to have good water. You're going to have to probably irrigate because in dry years, they'll die on you. But you also need some water that's low in, in, in bicarbonates because, as you said before, tap water is going to be alkaline. They do that because they don't want uh, acid soil to eat to the pipes or lead to lead. You know, Flint, Michigan, that's the problem they had. They allowed the, the, the tap water to get... Uh, Acidic, from what I understand, and that's what leached out the, the lead and you know poisoned all those uh, people down there. So or up there, so it's going to be alkaline. But one thing about it, if you come from a watershed, overall watershed it does have a lot of acidic soils. In, it has acidic soils in it, like in East Texas. There's not going to have a whole lot of bicarbonates in that water. If you just go a little bit to the west, and you're in the Trinity water system, system where they got a lot of limestone and stuff like that in it, it's gonna have a lot more bicarbonates. If you go to West Texas, it's got a bunch of it. Now the pH may be the same. You may have the same pH, maybe 7, 4, 7, 5, all three places, but according to how much bicarbonate is in it, is how fast it's gonna bring that uh, pH back up. So you've gotta be careful with that uh, and look into to that just to make sure you're not, your tap water is not bringing that pH up really quickly especially if you're in pots, which we'll talk about later. So you wanna have good water, you know, rainwater is the best, even though rainwater is about 7.0, but it doesn't have bicarbonate, so it's gonna kinda of take on whatever pH is in, is, is in your soil uh, profile. So that's not a problem. Number four, you're gonna to have to fertilize these things, okay? Uh, the best fertilizer for in-ground ones that I found is ammonium sulfate, because it's got sulfur in it, I think it's like 25% sulfur, so it's gonna kinda, of, you're, every time you fertilize it, you're adding a little bit of sulfur to it, so you kind of help keep that down. And, and, and if you don't have too many bicarbonates, that'll kind of keep that pH where it needs to be. Uh, but the bad part about it is just not, you, ammonium sulfate is just not just 2100. So if you're in the ground, that's all you need, that's okay. It is high salt. One thing you want to avoid is you don't want to say, okay, it's dry, I'm gonna put out a bunch of fertilizer, it rains, and then as soon as it rains, that, that plant takes up a bunch of water, it's gonna have a lot of salt in it because of the ammonium sulfate. So try to, especially if you're in, I'm jumping ahead, but if you're in a potty medium, water it one day and then fertilize the next. Uh, you do always want to fertilize before rain, but you don't want it to be too dry whenever you put the fertilizer out. So, you know, gotta watch out for, for, for buildup. So if you've got good pH, if you've got, you know, your pH is in the right range, you got sandy loam, the loam uh, soil, it's very doable to plant them in ground. If you don't have those things, if your pH is, you know, 6, 8, 7, 0, 7, 5, it's not worth trying, people, okay? It's just, you're gonna be fighting it all the time, and over time, that pH can come back up on you. You're gonna have to be taking soil tests to find out. By the way, those little meters that you get, 
for twenty thirty dollars a total junk okay i know one time i was reading on it and it said in its own description it was accurate to plus or minus 0. 0.5 why take it other people i've heard said they've taken them and they've said they've, they've tried pickle juice and they tried vinegar and, and it always read 6.0 you know they're not calibrated correctly they're not accurate if you're going to do the testing those little test strips that you get for pools you know that little litmus paper they work pretty well to get you close better than what those others would do but you really need to send them off to the lab they're going to do either two to one to one to one uh test on it and that's going to give you a ph range so you know spending probably by the time you mail it off and stuff 20 25 dollars every time you have to test it uh, in soil so that's one thing to consider also uh ph strips would do, do good one thing you want to do is if you got either used to steal water let sit 15 minutes and put the strip in it to find out what it is. So that's one way of testing it on the cheap. And that's just to see if you're within close to within range. So if you're like me, I didn't have, if you got pH is too high in your soil or you got clay soils, hey, these pots work pretty good. These plants are 12, 13 years old. Uh, they've been growing for a while. We've been harvesting blueberries off of them every day. Uh, they've handled the, the cold snaps and all the stuff we've had. Uh, this year we had down to 15 degrees and, and, and they came through just fine. They, and Harvey, every one of these trees went underwater for three or four or five days at least. We was out of the house for eight days, I know. So, and by underwater, I mean it's eight and a half foot inside the house. So these probably were nine foot, so three foot above all these things. You had water stamped up on it and it took, you know, a few days for that water to go down. So, and they survived it. Uh, so they can take temporarily low water. Uh, but you do want to have certain things. The first thing you want to have is a well-drained potting mix. So, but for, and I'm going to talk about that in conjunction with the pH. That's what I would do if I was going to grow blueberries and do it over again. Uh, I would get, I do a 5-1-1 mix, five parts pine bark mulch, because pine bark mulch with still green's got a fair amount of acidity to it peat moss, which does have good acidity to it. It's about four or five or so, and perlite. Now, if you say, I don't wanna buy this stuff separately, you can go to the store, buy good quality potting mix, not potting soil. Potting soil may have some soil, regular mineral soil in it. You don't want that, put that in a container. Buy miracle Grow uh, or some you know, good potting mix like that. I would take that and then I would add pine bark mulch if you got it to try to get the drainage better because regular potty mix is, is too, uh, depend, it has too much peat moss in it and it tends to pack over time. It breaks down fairly quickly. Uh, if you can find expanded shell, it's very good to put in these pots to help to help uh, with drainage and moisture control. Uh, you can get Optisorb from O'Reilly's Auto Parts, which is 100% coarse ground, uh, What's that stuff called? Words are hard. Uh, it's stuff to kill snails. I'll put that in the description. <laughs> uh, anyway, but you, you can use that. But, you know, get something that's well drained. Don't put pots in the bottom of it because that pots, you know, it goes, it catches the water. That catches the water. If the water never comes out, you can have water, you're going to have that pH of uh, the uh, salts build up. They're very sensitive to salt. You know, blueberries do not like salt at all. So just be, be conscious of that. If you want to use organics that work very well in uh, in-ground blueberries, don't work so well in pots. Uh, you do want to get some, if you're going to do it, get some that's for acid-loving loving plants because you can have some can help keep that pH down. So you got to keep the pH down. Start off with a good potting mix. Do not get any potting mix that has been, uh, had the pH buffered. Read on the read on the ingredients. It's gonna be somewhere on there. It's gonna say what it's made out of. Make sure it does not contain lime, because lime's gonna be raising that pH up. Lime for blueberries is like gasoline. It's gonna kill it. Okay, so don't put, you know, never put lime in anywhere we've got blueberries unless you have a really bad problem. Uh, you've really made the, the acid too low. Number three, you have to have some good water. Okay, remember we talked earlier about that water, and water would tend to creep pH up because it's, it's alkaline. One thing you can do is you can you can adjust your water. Now one thing you can, you can go to the auto parts store, get some get you the high, 
hydrochloric acid, battery acid, okay? 100% hydrochloric acid, all right? Yes, goggles, gloves, you get your water, you add the acid to the water, not the other way around. If, you, if you're safe with it, it's not that bad. Some people are gonna be too scared to do that. I understand it. I don't do it myself because I don't wanna have the acid sitting around and something happen, it fall over or whatever. But some people do that. And if you have high uh, bicarbonate, that's probably what you're gonna have to do. Uh, if you can get rainwater, that's even better, okay? Uh, the other thing that I've tried, I'm not sure this actually works, but I do it sometime. I do add vinegar, because vinegar will bring the, the, uh, the pH down, but it doesn't work in ground because it's, it's a biological process and then the, the, it will be reversed over time. My theory is if you're putting these in pots and you add vinegar to it, bring the pH down, water it, you're going to continue to water these things enough. It's going to drain that, that bicarbonate out before it, you know, reverts back to being bicarbonates again. So that's my theory. I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but I've done it. I haven't seen any problems with it. You do have to be careful. I, when I put my, my uh, fertilizer down, now I still use the... Uh, uh, you know, miracle Grow or something like that sometimes. I'd get this kind for acid loving plants. Uh, you can use the other uh, uh, coated stuff that, that takes a while uh, to break down. Uh, it, just a word of caution though, it will break down twice as fast as what it says on the, on the package, so you can use that. But, you know, that's doable, all right? Just make sure your fertilizer, you, you, you want to water them first, come back the next day and apply the fertilizer so you don't get too much salt buildup on it. Don't try to, you know, I'm gonna, you know, it's not looking good, I'm gonna boost it with fertilizer. A lot of times it's not the fertilizer that's the problem, it's your pH is off and adding all the fertilizer world's not gonna change that. There's a few diseases, I'm not gonna get into that because that's, to me, minor. Uh, so that's the four things. Also, like I said, there's two different varieties. There's, these are still in high bush here. Uh, so you wanna get two or three varieties of each one of those uh, to be able to cross pollination. And guys, that's the main crux of it. You're gonna have to say, I'm gonna to have to control my pH. I need well-drained soil, whether it's in the pots or in the ground. And make sure your water don't have too many bicarbonates in it. That's the main thing that you're gonna to have to deal with. So hopefully this has been helpful. It's not one that I'm gonna be, a, you know, it's not, a, it's not a guide to how to grow blueberries across the board. It's just some things you need to think about before you go out and buy that bush. Because what a lot of people do is I go out and buy that blueberry bush and I come home and say, now what I've got to do. If you do it for in ground, you're probably gonna need to keep that blueberry bush in a pot until you get that ground fixed with, with, with good drainage and, and or the pH. Uh, but, you know, it, it is doable. I've had these plants for a long time. Now, not all of them, I did have more than this. So some of them have died, but these, what is it, five of them I now got. And I did buy another one the other day. Uh, don't put wood ash in them either. <laughs> I, did, I messed up and had some water uh, in a bucket. That, well, I had some, some ash in a bucket that I was gonna pour out somewhere and then it rained and I forgot about it and I poured it on the new, new plant and it didn't, it didn't, it lost its leaves. But I think I'm gonna bring it back. But uh, again, it's just like lime. It's gonna raise that pH to, to you know, that's gonna cause problems later. So uh, just be careful what you put on it. You know, you're, a lot of stuff that, that people think are acidic isn't acidic enough to help blueberries. They like it low pH. So always keep that in mind. You're always kind of fighting that. You always have to keep that in the back of your mind. Think I need to try to do something to keep that pH low enough that they're gonna thrive. Anyway, hopefully that's been helpful. If you have any questions or any comments, uh, put it in the back. Uh, I will say one last thing from like a preacher. Uh, if you wanna know what your native soil is, if you live kind of out in the country, you can go to Web Soil Survey and that's a government site that you can get on that will tell you what your soil is at your house if it's not in the urban area. A lot of times they do got one called urban area and they don't really know what your soil is. They don't know what soil is because people write in but they did map all the soils. It does give you a good idea. You have to take an area of AOA, AOI, area of interest. You put that around there and you can go through there and it will tell you what the historical uh, range for your pH is. I know I did this for one person in Austin and her range for pH is 7.5 to 7.9. And a chance of the world she can grow blueberries in that area. But there's another area I think that she can. Magnolia trees, 
If you can grow a magnolia tree, you can grow blueberries. If your if your you know your drainage is okay. But anyway, hope that helped. Thank you.